So in this free module that I'm doing as a part of this email course that I'm publishing to my YouTube channel for free, teaching you guys how to essentially run your own email marketing for your e-commerce brand, we're gonna cover exactly how to build a really high converting pop-up for your store. So essentially when it comes to growing your list, pop-ups is one of the most crucial drivers of list growth for an, any given e-commerce brand, as it's literally shown to traffic that are already coming to your site that otherwise would leave without leaving their email. So what a really high converting pop-up will do is it's going to be able to capture anywhere from 5 to 15-ish percent of your total site visitors into emails for your list. And I'm going to jump into a screen share right now and I'm going to show you guys exactly how to build a high converting one within Klaviyo. So in order to create one, your Shopify integration needs to be completed as well as you already should have a list that you want to connect this to. By default, it's probably going to be like your newsletter list. So you're just going to go ahead and create sign up form under the sign up forms here and you can see by default most of the brands that you'll see they use like one of these type of multi-step forms with the image on the left or the right hand side with a bit of text it looks kind of generic kind of boring right and it might not necessarily be super on brand. And I can show you what this kind of looks like in practice, right? So this is a full page form, but if we were to use the standard pop-up like this, it would look something like this. We're just gonna choose a list real quick as a demo. So as you can see, it's a creative on the left and the pop-up on the right. And if you see in mobile, it's suddenly gonna remove the pop-up, why? Because a horizontal form looks very ugly. So I'm gonna show you guys how to turn a regular, boring, generic template inside of Klaviyo and make it actually look super on brand. And then I'll show you some of the various behavioral things and things on the copy side in order to actually make it a high converting pop-up, right? So first things first, I'll be honest, unlike third-party softwares like Just Uno or Optimunk, there's not really that many customization options when it comes to natively building pop-ups within Klaviyo. So instead, what I like to do is I always like to start inside of Figma first. So inside of Figma, I normally get my designers to design one of these pop-ups. You can see it's a lot more intricate. There's a lot more detail to it. And then we kind of take it from Figma, export it, and then upload it into Klaviyo. So in terms of best practices on the design side, you want to keep everything super linear, right? In terms of you don't really want anything crazy uh, graphically or anything too intricate copy-wise. Copy should be straight to the point and graphics should just make it stand out from the website. So what I mean by this is, let's say your website has a really light colored background, like let's say white or something. Your pop-up should have a nice contrast to the background of your website. So if you think about it in terms of like Shopify themes, you know how you have the accent one, accent and two color, right? If your background of the Shopify website is accent one, then accent two should be the color of the background of the pop-up to make it contrast, right? So for example, this brand right here, the background of their website at the time of making this like last year, it was white, right? So we created a red pop-up to make it stand out. And in terms of copy, you wanna eliminate as many like paragraphs as possible from the text, because you see how some pop-ups, what they'll do is they'll have like the small text right underneath the CTA button that's like, oh, we take your privacy very seriously and by opting in, you are consenting to receive marketing from us on a regular basis and you are complying to terms and conditions and blah, blah, blah. That stuff really kills conversions. So as you can see, we don't have any of that text under the CTA. And also we keep the actual text itself very simple. You can see it's get $25 off for the next 24 hours, right? We keep it super linear. I know a lot of brands add like a subheading underneath the main heading that's something like, oh, by signing up, you get immediate access to this discount for first time orders only. All of that just complicates the messaging and it's gonna kill conversions, right? So once you have a design, something along the lines of this, how the hell do you actually transfer it over to Klaviyo, right? Well, first things first, I'm gonna exit out of this and try to build one with a more linear template. Right? So we're gonna hit create a new sign up form and the template I always like to select is I filter by pop-up and then because right now I'm just demoing like an emails one, right? So I'm just gonna tick collect emails and I like to start off with this one just because it's the most simple one to use. So we're gonna see say free course demo pop-up, 
going to name it that. But in terms of actual naming best practices, conventions wise, we like to follow by putting our agency name first and then the discount that we're running plus the behavior. So let's say in this case, it will be like plethora, 25 bucks off first order and then we'll change the behavior to, I mean, like second second delay or something, right? We're gonna choose the list, agency newsletter, and boom, pop-up is created. So now how do we take this pop-up right here and turn it into the one that I just showed you? Well, first things first, you're gonna to wanna to export this into slices. So inside of Figma, there's a slice tool. If you press S, it should default to. So when it comes to forming a slice, it's essentially we wanna segment this pop-up into a few different chunks to export, right? So I like to chunk it as that, as one, and then we'll chunk another one as this half right here. And then lastly, we'll chunk the last half to be right here. So when it comes to creating the buttons and everything, the button itself needs to be created inside of Klaviyo, but everything else we can kind of export. So when it comes to taking slice one that we created right here, we just export this as a JPEG. It's really important that you export this as a JPEG because it's a lossy compression algorithm. But if you have transparent elements, for example, within your pop-up design, so for example, if I didn't want to include like this cow image and just have the logo sticking out, then it's very important that you export that specific slice as a PNG because that's how you get the transparent file. Anyways, so Next thing is, you're gonna to wanna to export this slice right here in terms of uh, no thanks for, I'd like to pay full price, boom. So you're just gonna hit export. And now that you've exported the slices, it's time to upload everything. So first things first, you're gonna to wanna to delete this these blocks because we're not gonna have any text blocks on our pop-up. The only thing we really need to keep is just these two elements. So first things first, go to add blocks and then just drag in a image block right above here, and then drag another image block right below the CTA button. Now, in terms of the first block, we're gonna upload the top slice of our pop-up. Slice one, boom, uploading, 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 and then slice two, we're gonna upload the second slice as well. You can see now both these slices are uploaded. It looks terrible, right? So how do you turn this into the real thing? So in terms of the first things first, we're gonna put the alt text. So get $25 off for next the next 24 hours. The reason why we wanna add alt text is just so that in case it doesn't load due to really slow internet connection or for, or for whatever reason, then we have a way to do it. In terms of the width, this is something that we'll essentially need to customize. But in terms of first things first, we wanna remove the padding. So we're gonna set that zero, 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 zero. And then we're also gonna do the same for here. And then close form. So the bottom, as you can see, I want it says, no thanks, I'd like to pay full price. If they click on this section of the form, it's gonna close the form. So that's basically the idea. And then I like to pay full price, close form. So that would essentially be the alt text. Now you can see the width of this is actually 800 by default. So we're gonna put 800 and then we're gonna put the top one as 800 as well, right? And now you can see there's still this like really ugly border, right? So what the hell do we do about that? Well, first of all, you wanna go into styles and the minimum height you wanna just like leave as it is. And then background color, you essentially want to set it to the background color of the actual form itself, right? So you can see it's the little edge on the border of here. So I'm going to zoom in and show you what I mean. So I don't mean this area right here. I mean this side border right here. So we're going to configure that color. And the thing that we always use is the eyedropper tool. So this is a Chrome extension that I like to use. And you could just, you know, do whatever eyedropper you want. But essentially, we're gonna get the color to be like this, boom. And you can already see it's coming together a lot nicely, right? Corner radius, we can leave at four, but we just wanna remove the padding here. So just padding, padding, left, right, boom, left, boom. 
So you can see already it looks a lot nicer, right? So all we really need to do is just change the button colors. So the button color, as you can see right here, is this yellowish color right here. And we just export the selection of colors. And we're going to put this as this. Oh, that's the text color, my bad. Um, button text, button color, boom. And then the text style, we could change this uh, click to get discount whatever and then font wise we can ju just change it to whatever the brand fonts are so i'm just going to put it as Arial for now and yeah you can see it, it looks a lot better right so obviously on the design that we did itself there's a lot more space and padding on the sides of the buttons and in the input field right so we literally just add some more padding here in terms of getting this to maybe like 30 30 and then setting this field to 30 30 as well Maybe we can increase that a little bit. Let's do 45, 45 as well. And you can see the pop-up now went from the really boring default Klaviyo templates to looking something a lot, lot better, right? And if you really want to get advanced, you can design dedicated pop-ups for mobile and desktop. And the only difference in doing so is basically just going into styles and then setting, oh, sorry. And the only difference in doing so is basically just going into targeting and behavior and selecting this pop-up to be shown on mobile only versus desktop only. Right? You could do both desktop and mobile, like this pop-up specifically would work on both devices. However, you can do uh, specific ones for specific devices. And then obviously you wanna be customizing the thank you page as well in a very similar fashion in terms of you can get it designed on a platform like Figma and then just bring it over to uh, Klaviyo afterwards, right? So this is essentially how to build a pop-up. Now let me talk about some targeting best practices when it comes to doing behaviors. So by default, the timing for pop-up forms is gonna be shown immediately. However, we don't wanna do this and we always wanna select based on rules. Now, if you're making a desktop specific pop-up, having exit intent on the pop-up makes sense. However, if you're doing a mobile only one, imagine when someone's scrolling on mobile, there's not really an exit intent trigger. So what I generally like to do is I like to keep it as either a time delay or a scroll delay it just depends on the different types of brands that i'm working with so for example one of the alcohol brands comes to mind right and for alcohol brands in order to sell online in the us there needs to be a pop-up saying are you 21 or above right so with this brand specifically we wouldn't use a time delay or a scroll delay instead we will use a after visitor sees a certain number of pages because we need to make sure that the visitor doesn't have have the pop-up show up uh, for the 21 plus age requirement at the same time as the email pop-up, right? Because it's going to skyrocket bounce rates and also kill conversions. So you just need to figure out what type of delay is most useful for your brand. But when it comes to time delay, I don't recommend going more than like eight to 10 seconds. And then when it comes to scroll delay, I don't recommend scrolling for more than 60%. Uh, I generally stick to like a 30 to 40% type of range when it comes to configuring the behaviors. Now on the success page, I always like to include the discount code that I mentioned on the pop-up itself. Reason being is that way people don't have to check their emails first and then continue Continue on their customer journey. The only time I don't do this is if an account is facing deliverability issues, in which case I actually want new subscribers to be going to checking their mailboxes and then coming back to the website. But generally speaking, incorporating the discount code right here is going to be very beneficial since it's going to be very easy for people to just copy and paste the code, add their things to cart, check out, add the code, and boom, complete their journey. Right? So that's basically it in terms of best practices. And this is actually how we build pop-ups within our agency. And in terms of target benchmarks you should be aiming for, it really is very dependent on the brand and also the demographic of brands that you're working with. But generally a five to 15% pop-up conversion rate is gonna be very good. And if you're a brand watching this and you just kind of want an expert opinion, feel free to book in a call with me, first link in the description. And I'll see you in the next modules of this free course, do subscribe because I'm going to be releasing them over time just because it's like 27 modules and it takes a while to make. See you soon.